We're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, trigonometric functions and evaluating trigonometric functions. It's a lot easier to evaluate trigonometric functions if you know your reference angle. Reference angle is basically the corresponding angle in the first quadrant that your angle works with. A reference angle is always acute. It's always the closest way between where your angle ends up being and the x-axis. Remember, acute means between 0 and 90. So for this first problem, we have 160 degrees. So you're always looking at the smallest angle to get to the x-axis. So in other words, we're 160. And then how far are we from 180? Well, that's the difference, and that would be 20 degrees. So 20 degrees is your reference angle. Looking at the next one, we're backwards 110. So your reference angle would be how far you are to the x-axis, which is here. How far is 110 away from 180? Well, that would be 70 degrees. Looking at this one here, we are at, uh, oh, that's not right. I think that's supposed to be at 275. So a 275 would rotate from here all the way to here. And so you're wondering how far from here you are. Well, go all the way around would be 360 and you're 275 away. So that gives you 85 degrees. Now here we're dealing with 4.5 radians. There's no degree symbol, so we know it's radians. Well, you got to think pi is about 3.14. So therefore, 3 pi over 2, if you do the decimal, about 4.71. So 4.5 is somewhere in between here. So our 4.5 would be all the way to here. And we are wondering basically what this is. So that's really the difference between your 4.5 and, and your pi, which is right here. So if we look at that difference we would get 4.5 minus pi. That's actually your exact reference angle. Do not approximate it unless it's asking for your approximations. So your reference angle would be 4.5 minus pi. Now, all these reference angles here refer to something in the first quadrant, and when we're working on problems here, they're going to be nice because we can just go with what we're supposed to have memorized from the first quadrant, and then answer all these questions, no matter what angle they are. So here is cosine of negative 60. So if we're looking at negative 60, you're 60 degrees away from the x-axis, your reference angle is 60 degrees. You're supposed to have memorized the cosine of 60 degrees. And so then you would write down your answer of 1 half. You now have to decide, is it positive or negative? So you got to think, oh yeah, when I'm here and I'm dealing with cosine, which deals with x, is my x value positive or negative in this quadrant? Well, it's positive, so your answer is positive one half. Next one, your reference angle, in this case, we're going all the way to 5 pi over 4. Your reference angle would be how far you are from the x-axis, which is here. So all you have to do is go 5 pi over 4 minus this here of pi to get your reference angle of pi over 4. Then that's an angle in the first quadrant. You're dealing with cosine. You're supposed to have memorized the cosine of pi over 4. Well, the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. We now have to decide if it's positive or negative. So we've got to think, okay, we're in the third quadrant. We're dealing with cosine. In the third quadrant, cosine would have to be negative because you're going to the left. So then you put a negative in front. Next one down, negative 120 or negative 150 degrees. You'd be looking for your reference angle so it's like, what's the difference between 180 and 150? And that's your reference angle. Now, you're not supposed to have cotangent memorized, but you are supposed to have tangent of 30 memorized. Tangent of 30 
you know is root 3 over 3. However, you're not going to write down root 3 over 3 because we're looking for the reciprocal. You're going to write 3 over root 3. Then, of course, you know you don't like to leave the roots in the bottom, so you rationalize it, and then you end up getting root 3. You now have to decide if it's positive or negative. Does tangent or cotangent deal with x or y? Well, it actually deals with both. And in the third quadrant, your x is negative and your y is negative. So when you do a negative divided by a negative, you actually get a positive. The next one, you're dealing with negative two-thirds of a pi. So your reference angle is how far you are to the x-axis, which were two-thirds of a pi of the way to a full pi. So you're a third of a pi away. So your reference angle is pi over three. You're not supposed to have cosecant memorized, but cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. You're supposed to have the sine of pi over three memorized. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. But because we're looking at the reciprocal function here, we're going to flip that root 3 over 2 upside down. And then we'd want to rationalize that. But we also have to decide, is it positive or negative? Now, we're dealing with this quadrant here. We're dealing with cosecant, which deals with sine, which deals with y. Is your y value positive or negative in the third quadrant? Well, it's negative, so we're going to throw a negative in front. Then we rationalize it, and we get negative 2 root 3 all over 3. The third type of unit circle quiz that you'll be having in class will be covering problems just like these. Now, we're going to approximate. To approximate, that means Go ahead and use your calculator, because that's what it does, is it approximates. So you're not supposed to have a secant button on your calculator, but you know secant's 1 over cosine. So go 1 over cosine, 67 degrees, 50 minutes. Remember, your degree symbol is second apse. Remember, your minute symbol is also second apse. And because you're dealing with degrees, you've got to make sure your calculator is in the degree mode. When you type this in, in the degree mode, you should get about 2.65. Cosecant, well, cosecant, you know, is 1 over sine. So you're going to type in 1 over sine. However, you don't see any degree symbol here, so you know you're dealing with radians, so you want to make sure your calculator is in the radian mode. Switch your calculator to the radian mode, type this in, and you should get about 3.89. So, we're now going to go ahead and work backwards trying to solve this. We're looking for an angle. We're told that our angle needs to be between 0 and 360 degrees, so then you'd want to make sure your calculator is in the degree mode for these problems. To get your angle by itself, to get rid of sine, you'd have to do the inverse sine of both sides. Inverse sine of the left side cancels out your sine, leaving you with your angle. Inverse sine of the right side. So that's what we're going to type in. When you type that into your calculator, it gives you this. That is one of your answers. So we have one answer right here, about 55 degrees. Now, we need to find all the answers. Remember, sine is your y value. So where else are you at the same height? Directly over here. So if you reflect that red angle over, then you would be 100 and, or 55 degrees back from 180 degrees. So your second angle here in green would be all the way to 180 going backwards at 55.336. So that's how we get that second answer, which once again was 180 degrees minus what we had to begin with. Now, 
you could always follow this rule, but I would encourage you to draw the unit circle, do your reflection, and work it out. This one over here on the right, you want to get cosine by itself. So to get rid of cosine, you got to do the cosine inverse of both sides. You would type that into your calculator. Directions are still 0 to 360 degrees, so you'd want to be in the degree mode. You type it in, and you get this angle right here, which is here. Now, you're looking for your second answer that has the same x. Now, remember, x is how far left you go and right you go. So you want to be this distance over, which means you've got to be straight below it. So you're going to take this angle here, reflect it over the x-axis, and when you do that, you get this. In other words, you'd be backwards 131 from a full revolution, which is 360. So you need to go 360 degrees minus that initial angle because of the reflection down there to get your answer of this. So now, let's look at cotangent. Well, let's see. Cotangent's reciprocal of tangent. So we know we have 1 over tangent is equal to this, which is really over 1. So I'm going to just flip both sides upside down because I'm looking for tangent. So now I've got to get tangent by itself, so I have to do the inverse tangent of both sides. Typing that into my calculator, I would get 36 degrees. Now, remember, tangent repeats every 180 degrees. So all we'd have to do is to go a full revolution beyond that to get to your other angle. Or you could also take your 36 and go beyond 180. Either way, if you're at the red and you add your 180 degrees, you would get the angle that you're looking for. So it's 36.023 plus your full period of 180 degrees. When you add those together, you get this. When we look at this other problem over here, notice the directions between 0 and 2 pi. So you need to switch your calculator mode to radians. You must switch it. So now, looking at co or secant, remember secant is... 1 over the cosine is equal to this. Come on, right. So then I'm going to actually go ahead and flip both sides. Then to get cosine by itself, I'd have to do the cosine inverse. I could type that in and I get this. That is over here. Now, remember that pi is about 3.14, so half of pi is about 1.57. So I knew I had to be just beyond that value. So i got to be somewhere over here. I'm dealing with cosine. You mean, remember, cosine is x. So you got to have the same x as this. So I could go straight down. So in other words, to get to this angle here, I'd reflect it over my x-axis, and I'd have to go backwards this much from a full revolution, which is 2 pi. So I need to go 2 pi minus what I had here because of that reflection to get to my answer. And if I type that into my calculator, I do 2 pi minus that, I get this. So, 
you need to have this chart memorized. You're supposed to already have memorized this stuff. You're supposed to, you should also have memorized by now the sine and cosine of zero and of 90 or 100 or pi, 90 degrees or pi over two. You also need to have memorized your Pythagorean theorem identities, and you need to have that this definition memorized that when you're on the unit circle, sine is your y, cosine is your x, and tangents y over x.